Hi, I'm Helen Marshall. I'm a certified primal health coach and founder of the food range Primal Alternative. Now, in video number four, this is video number four, I'm going to be giving you some practical answers to those five mindset blocks that we identified in video number one. Now, if you haven't watched the videos before this, I recommend you go back and have a look because this is a really powerful exercise for you to do to just really get your mindset right um, because as I've explained in the previous videos deciding to go paleo or primal is is great that's your strategy that's about 10% of what you need to do to make changes to behavior the other 90% is mindset stuff and this is why I keep seeing and you'll keep seeing and you might be keeping experiencing falling off the wagon again and again and again and people sign up to a six week program or something like that and then they find it really hard to keep with the the, the lifestyle when they come off um, the programs and really you know if you're making any kind of um, wellness and lifestyle changes if you want to get your health back and live your best life yet then you really need to do something that's doable and sustainable that you can just keep on doing for the rest of your life it isn't hard, you don't have to think about it anymore. And in order to do that, you need to identify the five blocks that are preventing you from getting your health back and living your best life yet. So in video number one, I identified what those five blocks were. In video number two, we did a little journaling exercise, working out you know, what we needed to let go of and where we wanted to be and what we needed to do in order to get there. In video number three, we've looked at three ancient methods to work through those emotional blocks, which were um, creating an affirmation, what was the other two? <laughs> Doing a visualization exercise, I'm just a real person. And the final one was accountability and support of being in a like-minded group, such as my online community, The Primal Alternative. You're very welcome to join us there. So I'm now going to give you practical answers to those five blocks. So now you've worked out where they were coming from, I'm now going to give you some answers to use um, in order to, to take inspired action so you can get your health back and live your best life yet. So objection number one or block number one is it's too time consuming. And I agree, it really is. If you try and make every single paleo primal food yourself um, and make, you know, like maybe you're gonna follow a menu plan from a chef and, and everything's got to be done from scratch and, and it's different ingredients for different meals, you're gonna just end up burnt out and overwhelmed completely. And I've, I've seen um, many mums who spend like whole days in the kitchen getting organized and the reality is a lot of us are already busy, you know, like we've maybe we've got jobs and we're looking after our family and we've got to do the cleaning and the shopping and the cooking and the socializing and drop the kids off to the spot. Like when do we have time to make sauerkraut and bone broth and jellies for the kids? And like, I totally get it, like totally, totally get it. So um, what you need to do is, and this really cheesy, say, like I'm, my background is 25 years in sales and marketing, and a really cheesy um, sales thing has just popped into my head, but it's really relevant. Keep it simple, stupid. So kiss. Mwah. Keep it simple, stupid. And you're not stupid, but it's just an easy way to remember it, right? So it doesn't have to be elaborate meals. It can just be a roast chicken from the supermarket with a salad. It can just be a steak on the barbecue with some steamed vegetables. Um, it can be a massive tray of roast vegetables that you eat every day for lunch. Um, when you, here's some tips to keep you on track. So when you come in to prepare a meal, think plants and animals, plants and animals, plants and animals. View each meal as a dinner. Don't think breakfast, lunch, dinner, because breakfast, we've been conditioned to eat cereal for breakfast. So that's kind of a tricky one. Breakfast is the, the one that most people have issues with. You know, maybe they don't have time to do eggs and bacon and stuff on a morning, and that's fine. Great breakfast ideas could be a couple of hard boiled eggs. You could make a frittata for dinner the night before and have that for leftovers the next day. You could find yourself a really good low sugar um, paleo muesli that you can um, put together with some organic yogurt or um, nut milk if you're dairy intolerant. Um, you could make little chia puddings that you can take with you. You could buy some primal alternative bread. 
that's my range. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help but plug that one. Um, and you could have that, you know, some, some smashed avocado on top. There, there are lots of options. Um, the key to making it a success is to do some meal planning and that's really easy all you need to do is just to write Monday to Sunday on a piece of paper start with your proteins for your meals so I always shoot for two fish meals a week three white fish um, sorry three white meat uh, meals a week and three red meat meals a week is that right six Seven, eight. No, there's not eight days in the week, so we'll go for two red meats. So, like for example, we'll slow cook um, a nice two kilo um, bit of hogget, which is like um, old old sheep. Uh, slow cook it up the weekend. We'll have Sunday roast every week, and then I'll have the leftovers of that um, hogget on Wednesday night. I'll cook it up with some chips, some steamed vegetables. Voila. Everybody loves that. And meanwhile, the hogget has been used in lunch boxes, in salads, throughout the week as well. Easy peasy. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays are our fish days, so I'll do like a nice fish cake recipe. Everyone loves that. You can put in so many greens, the kids don't even know about it. And on Thursday, we might do like tonight, we're having crispy skin salmon with just a heap of seasonal uh, vegetables, just stir fried with some um, coconut aminos and some fish sauce. Oh, easy, right? So easy. Monday, sometimes I quite like to have a meat-free day, so I might make a paleo quiche. Loads of leftovers for that during the week. Um, and then other things we all really love are like chicken drumsticks, slow cooked in the, um, sorry, roasted in the oven, 180 degrees, 30 minutes, delicious, crispy, keep the skin on, eat the fat, yum oh. Big salad with that, it's easy, you know? Yeah, so do some planning. And keep it simple, stupid. All right. Okay, slightly ranty there, but heaps to offer. I hope some of it helps you. All right, practical answer number two. The husband and the kids won't like it. Oh, I love this one. It is the biggest BS one out there. It's such the biggest, and I, I'm going to say this, and I come from a really pl real place of love when I say this, it's the biggest self-sabotaging, procrastinating block out there. To be honest, your husband and your kids don't really give a shit about what you serve up for them, so long as it's going to be delicious and everyone's going to like it. You don't need to stand there and lecture the family. Now, oh, we're going paleo and we're doing it because of this and blah, 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 blah. They don't care. Just serve them some delicious food and they'll eat it. They won't even notice that you've stopped serving pasta. And maybe they might notice the bread, but it doesn't matter. You stick, <laughs> you stick to your guns, right? Trying to change the whole family in one go is overwhelming. So start with you, okay? You commit to go primal. It's your journey. You want to get your health back. You want to live your best life yet, so start with you. And you might be an all or nothing person, and you might be slow and steady, making slight changes along the way and committing to that. And either which one you are is totally cool, but do what works for you because inevitably, once you become better and your health improves, it trickles down on the rest of the family, okay? That's how I did it with my family. I've got a tradie husband who eats like a horse. I've got two kids, one's six, one's nine, One's fussy, one eats everything, so I totally get it, okay? So, and I just focused on me. In our house, we've all got different shades of primal. I'm probably the most hardcore, and then, you know, my husband still has a little bit of gluten-free bread and that kind of thing, and definitely heaps more supplemental carbohydrates and starches than me, but, you know, he's a chippy. He works hard all day, and it, he's fine and healthy, and that's how, how it works. So um, let me see if I've missed anything on that one. Oh yeah, the key thing to doing, uh, getting your husband and kids on board is don't tell them. Don't tell them. Just serve them delicious food. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, if you're gonna, say, say you're gonna serve up a meal like I've just discussed, so like crispy skin salmon with stir fried vegetables, you think, oh, well my kids aren't gonna eat that. I've got two awesome tips for you. Tip number one, bring an extra starch to the table. So get some potatoes, chop them up into wedges, mix them up with some refined coconut oil, because not everyone likes the taste of coconut oil. Loads of Himalayan sea salt or a nice Celtic salt. Roast those in the oven for half an hour and bring some chips to the table. Rice, rice isn't so horrendous. Um, and you know, maybe not rice for you if you're sticking primal and you're going grain free. 
but rice for the kids and the husband is fine. So just bring an extra starch to the table, that way everyone's gonna get full. My second top tip, and this one is pure magic and genius, bring the magic ingredient to the table. And what's the magic ingredient? Hunger. Like I'm not saying starvy kids, are, I absolutely don't agree with that, but we are definitely in a, a stage of our species where we just don't tolerate hunger. Like at the tiniest, a whiff of hunger, we're like scoffing down a handful of nuts. It's like we're afraid to be hungry. But actually, hunger is amazing. The hunger hormone ghrelin, which I, remind, I remember because it, you think of your stomach growling, what, during that time, we can come up with really creative um, solutions to problems. If you think about our hunter-gatherer ancestors, they would, they would probably be starving by the time they were like tracking down their their prey and, and killing it. So they would have to work really smart. And so it can really put us in that really creative mindset. Slight detour, back to your kids. The reality is if you've just given them a whole packet of sacatars or a big plate of cheese and crackers before dinner, the chances are they're not gonna eat your dinner, okay? So keep snacking to a minimum and um, yeah, let them be hungry when they come to the, the table because they'll eat more of that nutritious primal meal that you've cooked for it. Okay, number three, it's too expensive. Oh my God, yes it is. If when, you first, when you first get out the Primal cookbooks and you go shopping for almond meal and free range eggs and grass fed beef, holy moly, it seems so expensive. But trust me on this, it's about the same as shopping for a standard Australian diet once you've got it streamlined. And when I say streamlined, what I mean is there's about, a, so I'd say for an average family of four, there's about a $50 um, part of the budget that's in the trolley that's full of those things, I can't even really call it food, but those, those Franken foods that are in the middle section of the supermarket, so like the rice crackers, um, the chips, the lollies, the cookies, the soft drinks, what else do you get down there? Oh, cereals all of those tins and jars and sugary sauces, right? So all those things that we were eating before, we're not buying. So we're just shopping the perimeter of the supermarket, going for the fresh meat and fruit and um, vegetables, and, and then we're out of there. Um, so you've got like a $50 leeway there, which you can then, depending on your budget, week to week, choose to spend that on getting better quality meat or, or going to your farmer's market and getting some spray fruit vegetables, going to your health food shop and getting some sauerkraut made by someone amazing in your community who has got the gift of making awesome sauerkraut. I know in the beginning I tried to make everything myself and I was in the kitchen non-stop and I've now chosen not to do that. So work out what you're happy to do and then give yourself permission to buy the rest because when it comes to expense, and this is Mark Sisson's um, take on it, he says, at what cost? Okay, so it, the food might be more expensive, but are you, due to your getting your health back, are you taking less prescriptive drugs that cost money? Are you having to, you know, being able to do more work now that you're not out of work because you're feeling so sick? Are you feeling so awesome that it totally justifies the fact that you're spending extra money on delicious, nutritious food that is nourishing your body from the inside out? It's a no-brainer. Okay, key point, uh, yeah, uh, block number four, I hate exercising and I'm no good at it. I agree. The fitness industry boom came around the same time that we got the message to eat low fat and high carbohydrate. And the message has been for the last 40 years at least, eat less, move more. Eat less, move more. And if you're overweight, it's your fault because you're too lazy and you're a pig. And that is absolute BS. It is such flawed advice. It makes me so cross because it's just, just making us all feel like absolute shit. And really we need to be empowered to take positive steps to getting our health back and living our best life. And that's why I'm so passionate to spread this message um, because I've experienced it myself and you can do it too and everyone else can do it and everyone else can feel better and we can really help the nation's health crisis. So the best one and um, the best information I can give you with regard to exercise, exercise, I hate that word, um, is that exercise is ineffective for weight loss. 
there are so many reasons to move our bodies, you know, like we're, we're energy, we're energy systems, things are moving and pumping and, you know, the lymphatic system and the, the, the blood circulating and plus the chi and the energy within our body. We're not meant to be stagnant, we want to move, we want to stand up. It feels great when you move your body around and you know it. And really, a, a primal lifestyle is all about getting back to moving frequently at a slow pace, lifting heavy things like the laundry, the shopping, your children, yourself, and sprinting once in a while. Don't be scared, it's fun, honestly, and I hate running, trust me. So yeah, so maximum fitness can be achieved in minimal time, but the key is, to get off our bottoms and start moving around in daily life and just really increasing that, that there. So that's easily done, honestly. Okay, and that leads into the final one. The final block is block number five, which is my parents are fat and riddled with health problems too. So were my grandparents and my brothers and my sisters and my auntie's cat and my uncle's budgie. So why should I bother? Because it's genetic. And this is my destiny. Ah, not true, not true. This is gonna be, if you believe that, this is the most liberating thing you're ever gonna have heard. So, okay, let's talk about genes, right? Try not to switch off, I'll keep it really simple. We inherit some fixed heritable traits, like I've got brown hair, I've got green eyes, I've got quite broad shoulders, my boobs are this size, unless I get them surgically enhanced, this is how I'm going to be, right? I'm five foot four and a half. I can't change those things, no matter how many bowls of broth I drink. You know, none of those things can be changed. But we do have um, other genes which, which um, switch on and off all the time, and they're influenced by epigenetics. Stay with me. I promise you, you'll get it. Which literally means above the gene. And those things come... The things that affect the genes that switch on and off all the time um, are all fall into lifestyle and food and sleep and sun exposure and how we move our bodies. So the good news is that you can reprogram your genes uh, and rewrite your destiny just by making some changes to the foods you eat and the way that you live your life. And how liberating is that? I think that's so liberating. Thank you so much for joining me for this four part video series on identifying the blocks that are preventing you from getting your health back and living your best life. I've got heaps of interesting, exciting offers and free content for you, free courses, free information. So please head over to my um, Facebook page, Primal Alternative, and give me a like. Leave some comments here in the video. Tell your friends about it. This stuff is easy to do. It's just a case of getting back to what we used to do before we screwed it all up and uh, that's very liberating and empowering and I would love to see you as well in my online um, social community on, the, on, on Facebook um, which is The Primal Alternative which is an interactive group of other mums like you and I who want to get our health back and live our best life and it's a really supportive sisterhood network in there so come and join us and I'll see you there. Stay tuned! Thank you.